All right, guys. So I thought I'd put together a little video here on my Sega Saturn Shooters collection. Um, and the Sega Saturn Shooters was really my first subset, my first sub goal that I saw, uh, sought after starting in the late uh, 2000s, really. Um, once I got my Saturn um, and I saw that I was into shooters, I kind of, it was a no brainer. So I found shmups.com and used the, the list of games there as my launch point. And uh, I kind of, obviously, you know, I kind of sought these out on eBay. Um, these were not games I could have found locally, uh, of course, because these, these are virtually all uh, Japanese imports. And uh, I don't, I know I don't have the entire collection of shooters for the Saturn, but I'm probably only missing one or two. Um, so, here we go. I'm just going to go through these and talk a little about each one and, you know, what I think. So, uh, first up is Afterburner 2. Uh, this was the arcade port of the fantastic uh, arcade game. And I always loved this game. And when it came out on Genesis, I always felt like it was it was a good port, you know. But I was it was always just shy of being close to the arcade. And this, this version is nearly arcade perfect. I used to have the mission stick. You know, the, the joystick with the, you know, uh, right hand on the throttle and whatnot. Um, but that got too bulky to have around. It kind of didn't make sense to have it just for like one or two games. So I ended up selling it. Um, it was fun to play with, um, but I didn't really need it around just for, for the two games. So, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll change my mind. But Afterburner 2 is a very, very solid game. And I know in the U.S., uh, this was released as the Sega Ages 3-pack uh, that came with Afterburner. Um, it had OutRun and Space Harrier all in one game, so that would have been awesome. But uh, uh, the Japanese, this wasn't very expensive when I got it. I, mean, I probably paid about 15 bucks for this, I think, back in the day. Uh, by the way, I am going in alphabetical order, um, so you can kind of make predictions about what's coming next. Here is Battle Garega. So Battle Garega uh, is one of the most uh, graphically impressive games on any 32-bit system, in my opinion. The just the sprite art, um, how much is going on at one at one given time on the screen, you know how many bullets are, how realistic the things are. Um, it's uh, so realistic that a lot of people um, complained, and they released. Uh, uh, the home ports with a pink bullets code or you go through the options you can turn the pink bullets on so that the, the bullets are bright pink so you can kind of navigate them better um and uh also known for its its ranking system um how the game gets more difficult uh the better you do so the more uh, pickups the more power-ups you have the more options you know uh the game the bullet count gets gets faster and you know there's more enemies and whatnot and uh, a lot of people don't I don't I actually don't like that aspect of this game either um so I have I'm not I have not as nuanced to be able to get through this game and uh play it the way it's supposed to be played I know that when your rank gets too high when you're doing too well you're supposed to die on purpose so that you can make it through the game um it turns out I just die because I die so you know uh, I don't know how high the rank ever gets but it's uh, besides you know Besides the point, this it's just a fantastic game. This is one of the crowning achievements of shooters on the Saturn, and it was an exclusive for a very, very long time. Uh, only recently did they release this uh, on modern systems like PS4. And Batsu Gun is it's my top one of my top five shooters on Saturn. Um, I just love this game so much. This was uh, the last of the Toll Plan games before they broke up and split up into the different companies. Um, lots of arcade action. The music is fantastic in this game. Uh, this is one that's definitely a lot of fun to play with uh, if you have an arcade stick. Um, insane power-ups. And, uh, you know, there's even like a, a level progressions a little bit. Like when you... Every time you kill certain enemies, you get you accumulate points, and then you can level your ship up so that your firepower uh, maximum increases. Um, of course, it's needed because the difficulty increases. Um, but just just a 
such a fun game such a one of the one of the best also oddly that this has a slightly thicker jewel case which is mildly annoying um depending on what type of storage you use um i don't know why they did that it's not like it's not like the instruction booklet was that thick you know it's just a standard instruction booklet so i don't know but a couple of these games have that up next is Blastwind. So Blastwind is made by Technosoft. So the same people who made um, Thunder Force. And uh, I believe this was made but never released in arcade. Um, or at least had very limited release in arcade. And then, um, you know, they ported it pretty much, pretty quickly straight to Saturn. Um, it's a, So it's a rare game. There's just not a lot of these pressed. And... Um, you know, it's it go because it's of its rarity. It goes for a high asking price. Um, is it you know considered? Is it a really good game? It's it's fun. You know, sure, it's a fun shooter. Um, sound effects are really loud. Kind of drowns out the music a little bit. Um, but uh, I don't you know I don't know that this. I, I wouldn't say this is one of the top sh ten trumps you should get for the Saturn. It's it's fun. Uh, if you're a completionist, you should get it. But um, not not at the top of the heap. Bokan to Ipatsu is a shooter based on the uh, Japanese um, cartoon, uh, same name I believe, and it's it's a wacky shooter. There's some zaniness going on here. Um, nothing too too mind blowing as far as you know mechanics or nothing very innovative. I don't think um, unless I'm missing something. Um, I could probably go back and visit it more. I, I haven't played it a whole lot. It's one of my more recent acquisitions. Um, also comes in another thicker jewel case. So. Capcom Generations 1. So this contains uh, 1942, 1943, and 1943 Kai. These are arcade ports. Um... The the scaling, you know, because the Saturn, you know, was a fifth generation machine, it output 480i and 240p. So scaling the arcade graphics to the home uh, wasn't super crisp. Um, it's just something hair off with with the um, the proportions and the, the orientation. Um, it's okay though. I mean, if, if you want if you want to play uh, the the gameplay is arcade perfect, but. Uh, you know, they just had some resolution issues. But uh, at, at the time, this was the only way that you could play these games at home uh, in, in arcade form. Uh, Cho Aniki. Um, yeah, and the, this, this is a game um, with, with uh, an infatuation of muscle-bound shirtless men and flying around shooting things and there's some you know tongue-in-cheek humor here and uh semi you know auto erotic imagery it's you know it's an oddball game it exists it's odd um play it because it's weird not because it's a great shooter fantastic night dreams cotton 2 so if you liked the first Cotton on PC Engine, um, this is more, um, but, you know, turned up a little bit. More cutscenes, uh, the animations, the, the graphic design is, is kind of being cranked to 11. There's some really beautiful boss designs in this game. And, you know, kind of as cute as ever. Um, it helps to have Turbo Fire. Um, actually, you know, I think that might be a setting. I, I think it might be Turbo by, by default. I, I can't remember if this version has turbo or not but uh but yeah so cotton is a great game you know the whole cotton series is fun and then we have cotton boomerang which was um almost like a remastering of cotton 2 but because a lot of the gameplay is the same a lot of the stages are the same but the they instead of having three lives they gave you different witches who would be your second and your third life uh for example so um it changes up the gameplay that way, um, but you know, it's it, other the gameplay 
it's mostly the same as Cotton 2, and it's a Cotton game. I mean, how much does it have Cotton games actually changed? So this one is, for some reason, really more sought after than this one. At least, at least it's rarer, so maybe, maybe hit a lower press run. I don't know. Daytona Twin B Deluxe Pack. So this is, uh, I think it's two Twin B games. Um, you know, Twin B is like the flying ship with the uh, the boxing glove arms that like drop bombs and and uh, you know it's it's from what I understand it's arcade perfect. It's a fun game. I'm not crazy about the Twin B because the whole shooting bells and juggling them. I'm not really crazy about that. And then hoping you get like the right color so that's a certain power up. Um, it's kind of frustrating for me, but you know, it's it's fun in spurts. Darius two. So the Darius series has a couple entries on the Saturn. And Darius 2 um, is known on the Genesis as Sajaya. So the original arcade was uh, several screens wide, like three, ar three arcade screens wide. And so uh, when you're trying to make a home port of that, you've got to zoom in and you've got to kind of like force the action into one screen which makes uh, you actually have less response time than you would in the arcade because you know in arcade you could see it two screens away if, if shots are being bullets are being fired at you you know and so yeah you know um, I think they did a but this is it's almost it's weird it's it's not as fun to me as the Genesis version for some reason I can't put my finger on it even though it looks more arcade perfect um, you do have the choice to zoom in and out I think you can do that with your art your trigger button. Um, to change perspective but when you zoom out your ship just is so tiny it feels so slow so it's kind of awkward so um i don't know I, th I think they did a better job porting it for the genesis darius gaiden uh is not a three screen wide game it's it's a single screen and so as as a result it's just a much more better balanced game um Bosses are just as big and, and large and crazy as before. Uh, the music is very oddball, but it's, it's very catchy. Um, it's almost like space opera. Um, it's a lot of fun to play. Your your bomb is now a black hole bomb, which is very satisfying to drop. And you can, it has the mechanic. I'm not sure if they did this in the other games, but if you, you can capture mid-bosses by shooting at the little orb on the top of their head, and then it loosens, and if you grab it, the mini boss becomes you know they join your fight and they they kind of you know shoot down enemies for you they're they're limited though because they always end up dying before you get to the main boss which of course is understandable um this is one of two of uh, the shooters that were released domestically in the u.s all right um so that the u.s release is so much more expensive but for some reason this one is is not that expensive at all i mean when i got this one i got this for under twenty dollars um they were all over. They were all over eBay. You know, they just it just wasn't very expensive at all. But definitely worth it. Definitely, this this is a top ten Saturn shooter, uh, in my opinion. So Dayzaman Two is a uh, shoot 'em up maker. Um, I have not had much progress with this um, because, of course, the instructions are in Japanese. Um, granted, I didn't put a ton of time to, like, kind of work out the, the mechanics of it myself, so maybe I'll go back to it and try to build something from it, but, um, I kind of just thought it too daunting from the start, so I didn't really even try. Dodon Pachi, and, of course, Don Pachi. Um, this comes first alphabetical, but this is actually the sequel. This is the first game. Um, so Dodon Pachi was a revolutionary arcade game. It kind of, um, following in the heels of Batsugan as, uh, the progenitor of the new bullet hell genre, um, Dodon Pachi just introduced a couple of mechanics that are mainstays now in today's, uh, arcade scene, like the, the shooting a beam, a thick beam laser, or, you know, you're a wide shot. Right, and when you shoot the thicker laser, it does more damage, but you move slower. Um, and you've got bombs that you can drop. Um, this this version has some audio clipping issues, 
where the the voices are not eq'd very well and so you know the, the voiceovers you can hear the, the they, they go over the top end and then you hear them get clipped off and it's kind of like a poppy sound so uh, also the resolution in converting the arcade to the home port it's not great um, the interlacing really messes up uh, the look of this uh, it does have the tate mode you know where you can rotate it and then um but uh, if you don't have your tv set up that way it's uncomfortable to sit on your side and i don't know i don't know who would really do that so i know i guess now you have flat screen tvs that can they're on mounts that can rotate 90 degrees if you want to go through all that trouble great you know you can fix the 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 image resolution problem but um you know i don't have that so dodonpachi uh the sequel um is a true sequel it, it carries the the spirit of the original game and it does everything a little bit better a little bit cleaner a little, i think so a little, um the actions there's more action you know the weapons are bigger um no audio issues in this game and it does have better uh tv options like in game when you hit pause you can change the video options to to slightly zoom in or zoom out depending on the fit of the screen so that you can um avoid um shimmering you know with with the interlaced video or with the uh uneven pixel sizes so it's it's it's, it's better you know it's gameplay wise these are both excellent right i guess i'm nitpicking at at the visual details but uh as far as gameplay if you play these on a crt they're still gonna look great All right the issues really aren't are really only noticeable when you uh put them on a flat panel Fantasy Zone, another one of the Sega Ages um, line of releases, arcade port. What else can you say about Fantasy Zone? It's it's Fantasy Zone. They, to be honest, I think they should have you know put more on this disc other than this this nineteen eighty six arcade game, but uh, you know they didn't. It's a good game. Uh, game Paradise. Now uh, I forget the I forget how you say the real name of this. But this is a kooky game. Um, this they actually re-released this on PS4 a couple years ago. So you're in a giant arcade and you're flying your little ship and you can get various options and these options range from like rocket ships, robots, teddy bears. Um, it's kind of crazy and zany, um, but it's it, that makes it different, you know. And so therefore, it, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Gekurinden is a shooter about, um, there's some time, story involving time travel, and so each stage warps you to a different year, you know, and so you've got like, your future year, you've got your, your um, 1940s, World War II era year, you got your, your 80s, like with your jets and whatnot, um, it's a, and you know, the boss like at the end escapes and then goes to a different year and then you like chase him. But when you chase him through and you go through that time portal, you end up, you know, as a different ship that's more era appropriate. So actually a lot of fun. Um, not really spoken of a lot. I right? just, I guess known only to Saturn schmuck collectors. So Gekurinden, good game. Uh, Gokujo Parodius Deluxe Pack. Uh, there are three Parodius uh, packs for the Saturn, and uh, this one has, it's not the first couple, I think it's the middle two games in the series, um, and you know, with all Parodius games, each each edition had more and more characters that you could play as, and all of these characters have different um, selectable power-ups in Gradius fashion. So like the octopus, you know, the first one's speed, the second one is some kind of missile, the third one is some kind of double shot. But depending on who the character is, all of those those weapon types change. So um, it's there's so much variety, you know, and there's so much replay value here, well, which is good because it, it's a tough game. Um, these I, f I actually think these games in some ways are, are more difficult than uh, a standard Gradius game. And I'm not. I'm not sure why. Maybe, maybe it's because with Gradius you have only one series of weapon flows to choose from, so you get used to them. There's not as many. You're not, it's not overwhelming. But with there's so many weapon choices in Parodius games, um, it's just hard to pick with one and get good with one. So maybe it's because I'm always choosing different ones. Why I'm never. That's why I'm just not really getting good at it. I don't know. I guess I'm just guessing. 
So the Gradius Deluxe Pack uh, contains Gradius uh, 1 and 2. And they're pretty much arcade perfect. Gradius 2 is... Um, I don't know if it's harder or if I just think it's harder, a lot harder. Because Gradius 1 I've been playing since since I was a kid, you know, on the NES. And even though the arcade port is, is technically more difficult than NES, it's easier to pick up and play because I'm familiar with the stage layouts. Whereas, whereas Gradius 2, I just feel like Maybe there's more cheap deaths with like uh, like flame arcs, you know, coming out of nowhere, and you just have to memorize where where not to be. Um, with Gradius games, when you die, you, you by usually by the time you die, you've amassed such uh, weaponry that when you come back and you respawn, you're 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 so weak in comparison that you get obliterated right away. It's not any fun. So with almost all Gradius games. The, the minute I die, I just shut it off because I've had my fun. The most fun I'm, I've had, you know, has been played up to that point, and it's gonna be painful from now on trying to like recoup all the power ups again. It's just it just doesn't happen in a timely fashion. So I don't maybe maybe that's like a bad attitude, but I don't know. That's just how I play it. Guardian Force. So this is a tank shooter, um, like a futuristic tank shooter where. Um, you, if you remember the game Jackal for the NES, how your grenades can be shot in any direction, but your machine gun only fired in one direction, this is very similar to that. You're you have a, a gun that shoots forward only, but your main turret can be turned to fire. So uh, you're you're managing that kind of control, um, which you know is unique. Well, it's not unique, but it's it's the only one I like that on Saturn, and it's uh, it's fun because you can different tanks to choose from. Um, the stages are are pretty varied. Um, a lot of color in this game. So, so yeah. Gunbird. So Gunbird is uh, developed by a the development house Psycho Psycho, and uh, the Psycho games all have a, a very similar play style um, in that. You, whatever your avatar is, you have different type ways of firing. It's just like a regular rapid fire, I think, if you hold C. But if you hold down A, it pauses and powers up a shot. And when you have different characters, like here, each one of those has different attack attributes. And so your powered up shots looks different. Your regular shot looks different. Your rapid fire shot looks different. Your bombs look different. And you collect P icons to raise your levels a couple of times. And of course, making you more and more powerful. I think Sikyo games are some of the most fun shooters. I'm really a fan of of, of that, and and mainly the the vertical scrolling ones. Um, I just feel like the uh, difficulty ramp is fair in Sikyo games. Um, oh, by the way, they all have like selectable difficulty in the menus. Um, it's it's funny because you could even set the monkey to the lowest setting, which is like it's called monkey. Um, which is supposed to be an insult, right? Like, you, you're you're so bad, you're playing, like, at the skill level of a monkey. But honestly, like, you know, if some people need to dial down the difficulty to have fun in the game, I'm all for it, you know? There's no reason why a game has to beat you up every time you play it. So I don't choose monkey. I, I, I think I bring it down one notch from the middle, and I play it from there. Uh, more experienced players will probably raise it a little bit because, you know, people are hardcore like that. Um, but, yeah, so great game. Uh, there was a sequel on the Dreamcast. Arcade Gears, Gun Frontier. So this is an interesting arcade port. Um, all of the weapons, or all of the ships, look like guns. If you look at that, that flying ship there, that looks like a... And I don't know the name of that weapon, maybe a Colt 45. I, no, actually, I have no idea. Um, so when you're playing the game, your ship... It's just, there's, the designs are so interesting to look at. It's an early game, so the mechanics, you know, there's not too much there. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's um, a very unique game. And I don't know why, I, don't, I have the game disc, but I don't know why they came with a second slot here. I don't know if this was supposed to be a soundtrack or that I don't have or something, and it didn't come with one. should probably look into that, but I know I have the game. So it's double pack. Right. Hyper Duel, uh, another Technosoft game. This game is crazy fun. Um, 
you have a ship that uh, when you pick up your that can change from a uh, robot battleoid kind of robot you know or ship and depending on which one you're in your fire pattern changes like if you're a robot you you shoot kind of like a spread but if you're um and it's and it's aim you can directional you can aim it but if your ship you, your profile narrows and so you have a smaller hitbox you know but you 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 don't have as much firepower in the ship form and even the options that you pick up you will pick up options and some of them are going to be in ship form and some of them are going to be like robot form so um a lot of fun really great graphics music is good um this is technosoft at the top of their game um so if you like thunder force games this this you'll be right at home playing this uh this game is crazy expensive um I lucked out, and uh, the guy I bought this from, he, he he had a flood, and so the pages in the manual got wet, and they they got stuck together. So I got this for basically a song and a dance, um, and I figured, and I can't read Japanese, so I, do I care that the pages are are stuck shut? You know, from from afar, it doesn't really matter. I can't really read these, so. This that was that was to me that was like the only conceivable way I was going to be getting this game because this is kind of a later addition to my collection. Um, I didn't really hop on it earlier on. All right, Image Fight X Multiply. So this was the most recent, one of the most recent uh, shmups. It's been on my list for a long time, and I kind of sat on it and sat on it, and then you know. It, if I, I thought it was too expensive for the time and I just kept going up and like, oh, dang, I better well just bite the bullet and get it to round out my collection here. Um, Image Fight, a lot of people know what Image Fight is, the arcade game. It's very, it's brutally hard. Um, and, uh, you know, if you don't play the game right, it sends you to <clears throat> this, I forget what it's called. It's like a punishment zone where it's, they send you to the stage, which is super ridiculously hard. Right, like as if as if you weren't being punished by the game enough. If you don't do well enough score wise, you get to go to this brutal zone, and if you survive that, then they, then you continue gameplay. Um, you get options. Some of the options are fixed directions, so some will only shoot forward, and then some will um, shoot at different angles. Um, for people, you know, it it really commands your respect. Like if you want to get anywhere, you have to really be patient and figure the game out and learn it. Right, because there is a way to get through it, but it just doesn't present itself as easily as other games. X multiply. Uh, your ship has like these wavy claw-like arms that can be used as a shield. If you pull backward, the, then the the arms kind of like lurch in front of you and surround you, and and you can use it as a protective barrier. Um, so it's an interesting play mechanic. But you know, your motion changes the position of these arms, so you kind of have to be cognizant of that. Very interesting mechanic. So, yeah, two games, one disc. Another Proteus game. Uh, this one is known as Chatting Proteus. Um, if you notice, there's like little, what look like speakers and like noise, you know, symbols coming out of there. It's because uh, during this game, there is an announcer and of course being a japanese game he's speaking japanese and what else would he be speaking right and um he's talking all the dang time and he's having a blast i don't know what the heck he's saying but he's but he's loving his job and he's just kind of going at it and i imagine he's probably ridiculing you right or like kind of making fun of your choices and your power-ups or like the fact that you died or something um it's so crazy um you know, more more characters to choose from, more power ups, just just lots and lots and lots of variety. But expect that Gradius like difficulty. So when you get taken out, you know, do you want to continue? Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's like you gotta go through all that again. Um, but it's fun until you die. Katai Daisensu, otherwise known as In the Hunt. So this game. Um, uh, most people know by now that it was made by the same team at IRAM who went on to make Metal Slug. So a lot of people call it Metal Slug Underwater because when, the minute you turn this on and you notice all the animations and the, the style of the art and the motion, um, 
it literally looks like a Metal Slug game. You know, hyper detailed sprites and motion, um, the humor, maybe not so much humor here because you don't you don't really see uh, you know human people running around making facial gestures or whatever, but uh, just it's a it's so much fun, so fun to look at. The only thing about this port um, is that it was not optimized for the Saturn. Um, it was released also for the PS1 and the PS1. The, both both versions have slowdown, but this this version crawls uh, for some reason. They just didn't dial in, you know, which CPU, which processor was handling what correctly because it slows down and starts chugging. And there's so much animation, especially during big boss battles, that uh, it's got to process everything. Right, so it takes a long time, but um, I, I still think it's a must own. It's, it's just it's still a lot of fun. Kingdom Grand Prix. So this is an interesting game. This is a hybrid uh, shoot 'em up and racing game, and um, I have never gotten the knack of this game. Um, you you. You're supposed to you fly faster if you're not shooting i guess right but you do shoot you slow down but you're you're also scored on what place you finish in so it, it messes with your head because of course as you shoot them up you feel like you need to defend yourself and shoot right but you also are racing so um it's kind of there's a lot of characters to choose from oh and the the ships in this game are bonus ships in battle garega if you set set up something the settings right in the menu of that game um, they're made by the same people, the same team, uh, this and Bale Grega. So, um, yeah, it, some people love it. I, I think it's okay. QQ uh, Tiger 2 Plus. So, uh, this is Twin Cobra 2. Um, I think they say plus for some reason because when they bring it back to the Saturn, maybe they added some things to it. Um, in Twin Tiger 2, it's like. Or I'm sorry, Twin Cobra 2, um, you're, you're some stages, you know, you're flying just like you normally would, but then there's some parts where you'll zoom in, right? And then everything will zoom in and you'll be working closer to the surface. And so things will be bigger. And then you'll like zoom back out again. And so there's a lot of zooming in, zooming out. And I find it really hard when you zoom in because now you're a greater percentage of the screen and there's less room to hide. So that makes it more difficult. Um, but it's a it's a neat mechanic, um, and it's interesting to if you've played um, um, Twin Cobra a lot, then this is the next logical step, right? Okay, layer section. So layer section is the second game that was released, the second shoot 'em up um, released domestically. Uh, for the Saturn in the U.S. It's called Galactic Attack. And why they changed the name, I have no idea. Sega changed the games of uh, series all the time. I just don't understand their logic. It's as if they, as if they didn't want you to recognize the franchise. Right? Oh, we've got this great franchise. All right, let's come out with the sequel. All right, let's change its name, you know. Um, this actually has several. It's called Gunlock, I think, in European regions, too. So it's just all over the place. Um this game, uh, the gimmick here, not gimmick, but uh, you're shooting on two planes, right? You've got your main laser, which shoots ahead of you, but then you have a lock-on laser, which shoots things below your plane, and that's that's where the fun comes in. Um, you'll, I find myself just holding down the regular laser, but I'm not really paying attention to the regular laser. I'm more so paying attention to the um, where the, the lock lock-on lasers are going. So, super fun. And you do get power-ups, like you can power up your main laser or whatnot. Um, if you die, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, you can still just jump in and, and, and you know, you're not that far behind. So that's, that's a good thing about this. So Layer Section 2 um, was a polygonal sequel. They take, took the game and they, they made polygons, and so... Um, the gameplay the idea is still the same. You're still shooting at different planes, like, you know, in front of you and below you. So you still have that lock-on laser. Um, because this was like a transition generation for 3D graphics, you know, they look okay, you know. Um, I don't like it as much. I, I much prefer sprites. But it's still a good game in its own right. 
Metal Black is an early Taito arcade game. And this game, uh, it got a lot of interest. It's interesting because there's biological uh, entities that you're fighting and they can absorb these molecules. I don't know if you can see these little molecules in the picture here. They can absorb those, but you can absorb them too. And you actually need that to build up your energy bar for your super weapon. So during boss battles, they'll be floating around and, it's, and you'll see like both you and the boss will be like going for these molecules to try to build up your, your power gauge. So it's kind of, it's really interesting, a lot of fun. Um, kind of dark. Uh, your the premise is the world is basically has been destroyed and like you're being evaded and you're basically like one of the last people on earth i don't actually i don't know if it's earth but i'm assuming it's earth um but uh yeah the power mechanic is very satisfying to use if you get it fully powered up on a boss but but you know again they can do that too to you which is interesting so night strikers s i guess the s stands for saturn because night strikers was also released for the sega cd in japan um it's uh i never noticed that terminator looking face before um it's a car shooter kind of like knight rider flying into the screen like space harrier style um it's odd it's different um parts of it remind me of thunderblade sometimes the other parts remind me just like of space harrier with like columns and things to avoid uh, it's an okay game it's fun but um you know, completionists only, right? Panzer Dragoon. So the first one was not an RPG. So this is the first one. Um, it's more of a, a, a rail shooter. You get on your dragon and you can shoot, you know, um, as, as you're targeting reticule kind of moves across the screen and fires upon those enemies. Um, this cover was done by the comic book artist Mobius. And it's just... It's really, really cool. I don't know why they didn't use this for the, the... Or maybe they did. Actually, I'm not sure what they did for the US cover. I have no... I have virtually no US Saturn games, so... Um, can't really speak to that. But, you know, everybody knows Panzer Dragoon. Planet Joker. Um, this game is... Uh, just reviled across the shooter community. People hate this game and think... And it's almost universally known as the worst shooter um yeah it's bad it's it's there's nothing good about it it's very plain almost phoned in i don't know that it's if it stands out as the worst shooter but everybody seems to think so it's i don't know if everybody's grading it it's like a two out of ten maybe i'd give it like a three or four out of ten right i've played worse games i think radiant silver gun the one and only so uh, this is treasures, shoot them up. Some call it a, um, a puzzle shooter, right? Because you have all of these different weapons, these different weapons stock, and they're just mapped to different buttons. And so depending on the situation, certain weapons are gonna be better for that situation. So um, uh, hence the puzzle aspect, right? And then if you wanna get like score heavy, you could only shoot colored enemies of the same color like and that will like give you bonus multipliers uh, i find it really difficult to play that way because i'm really just kind of playing to survive i'm not good enough where i can avoid everything and pay attention to the color of the things i'm shooting um like i just want to make it through and see the end of the game so but uh there's different modes here there's the arcade mode which but there's also the saturn mode and if you turn on saturn mode you can it, it stores, like, every hit that you 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 shoot down with a certain weapon gives you experience, and your weapon, that particular weapon will be powered up. So if you always use, like, the wide beam, your wide beam gets stronger, you know, as you progress through the game. And, you know, there's, with the six different weapons, that's true for all of them. And uh, you have this sword <clears throat> called the Silver Sword, Radiant Silver Sword or something, and you, you can swap it around and collect these little pink molecules and um when you get that when you collect enough of them your meter fills up and then you you have this giant sword which will just slash across the screen and do mega damage to to bosses and basically wipe up any little enemies that are on the screen it's very satisfying to use some say this is the best game on the system i can see why um it's not my favorite but it's very 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 good 
um, has a spiritual sequel, um, but made by Treasure for the Dreamcast called Ikaruga. Next up is the Salamander Deluxe Pack. Oops. I'm just grabbing some water here. So Salamander, um, for those who don't know, is Life Force, um, which was released here in the U.S. on the NES. So there's Life Force, there's Salamander, and then there's Salamander 2. Um, all fun games, right? So with Salamander, you your pickups, your power-ups are just straight up power-ups. Like, oh, here's an option. Oh, here's the laser. Oh, here's the missiles. Uh, with Life Force, this plays in the style like Gradius, where the power you collect the energy capsules, and uh, you have to move the meter and select. Um, I think that version it's harder to play that way because that means you just gotta collect way more power ups to power up your ship. Whereas in Salamander, you automatically have an option if you pick up an option, right? You don't have to collect the the four or five energy pods or whatever it is. And Salamander two is is kind of just bringing that up a notch right and uh, involves some i think it's i'm not sure if they're polygons for some of the sprites um but you, it's still it's still side scrolling 2d so um i like salamander 2 a lot actually i like actually i like all of them but i like salamander better than life force okay um this is sexy parodius which is kind of an odd choice to name a video game. Um, but I guess they said that because, you know, maidens, like women, are like the feature bosses throughout this game. So, and they're all scantily clad. And, uh, and you know, they're not really showing you anything, but they're like implying that you would see stuff. But there's like this pole in the way or, so, you know, that kind of thing, the tongue-in-cheek, like, innuendo. Um Lots of, of selectable characters and, you know, just select, collect power-ups. It, it's uh, Produce games are Gradius games, right? So um, they're all good. They're all hard. Sengoku Blade. So um, this game is made by Sikyo. Also, this is a horizontal shooter where your avatars are, are humanoids. And like all Sikyo games, you have different modes of firing. You can power up your shots. You can get options. You have a bomb. Um, lots of fun. The music here is, you know, this is obviously mythical feudal Japan, right? And so the music is very, very true to to the aesthetics of the game. It's, it's very historic. It seems like it fits the era of the Japanese history that they're conveying here. And so it's very unique in that regard. Um I'm not saying it's bad, it's just, you know, when you turn on, you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Oh, and something just popped out of me. Okay, so this is like an art book. This is not a game. The second disc here, um, the first game is here. Um, but one of my favorite shooters, just so much fun. I mean, I'll, just checking out the different power-ups and the different bombs that each of the characters have. Um, and I love the random feature, like when you select your character, you can, if you don't know who you're going to pick, you can just check, pick random and it will select for you. So let fate decide. A uh, lot of fun. Okay, this is called Shein Ryu. Um, and this is a shooter with very good S character animations. Um... In this game, like whenever all these ships that you shoot down, even like the popcorn enemy ships, when you shoot them, they you see them careening down to the surface with a trail of smoke, and then they just like make a big poof like on the ground. Um, it's a lot of fun. The it's pretty basic. Um, you have different weapons. You've got like a lightning weapon, which is like a spread. You got missiles, right? And you or you got like a Vulcan. Um, so nothing really earth shattering there in that regard. But still a lot of fun, right? It's sometimes simple as best, but you're in for a graphical treat when you play this game. So very underrated, I think. Sonic Wings Special. 
So the Sonic Wing series, for those of you who don't know, is a Neo Geo shooter series. And um, Neo Geo had Sonic Wings 2, Sonic Wings 3, I think. And this is a uh, kind of a mishmash of the two games together that when they released it for the Saturn. Oh, and it popped out. And there's a lot of character. Like, I think they combined the character rosters from the two games into one. So there's so many you can choose from. And uh, it, it's a little ridiculous to, like, choosing, like, a dolphin, right? Or, like, a baby. One of these is a baby, right? And then there's, like, a ninja. And so it's you're very zany in that way. Um, and they all, all the weapons, the ship, they have different ships. They have different attributes, you know, as far as firepower, speed, bombs, power-ups, um, I love when games do that, when they have lots of characters that they to choose from with their different attributes. It just gives it a lot more replay value. Uh, also a, um, a soundtrack, I think. I haven't really actually listened to it. So, Sonic Wings. It's, it's a very simple game, but I find myself playing this game so often. So, it's in my top 15 or so game shooter games for the Saturn. Um, but probably, if you ask the general community they'd probably have it a lot lower skull fang so skull fangs from data east and uh this game oh still got the sticker on it um it's a three it, the 3d polygon shooter but played in 2d right so i guess what do we call that 2.5d um the the models the character models don't look great um you know, again, they're 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 trying to expand into 3D at the time, so it made it made sense. Lots of companies are doing that. I just don't think that you know that's not my favorite look for games like this. Um, this I think it's a sequel to the Genesis game called Vapor Trail, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And Vapor Trail is fun. Um, this game's you know it's okay. It's an average shooter. Soul Divide. So this game is also you know, it's 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 made by Sikio again, and it's um, uh, Avatar horizontal shooter, kind of like um, Sengoku Blade, but for some reason it's not executed as well, um, because there your characters can shoot, but they also have a melee attack. So if if these enemies get too close to you, then your character will like whip out a sword, you know, and um, you know there's bombs and there's power ups attacks too, and but for some reason, it's just the gameplay, it, it does not come out very smooth. Then maybe it has to do with the hit detection, which is kind of wonky. So you'll be going in trying to do a melee attack, but maybe you didn't account for the time it takes for the, the player to unsheath their sword, and so you get hit anyways. I mean, it's 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 kind of an, it's an interesting idea. you got to give them credit for being creative that way. But they just pull, didn't pull it off right. Maybe they need more. You know, If they released a sequel to this, maybe it would have been more refined. But as it is, it's it's just it's just okay. Uh, I don't hate it as much as the general community hates this game, you know. But you know, it's not good. Sukyu Gurantai. This is made by um, the same team that made Battle of Garega, and this is possibly my top in my top three shooters for the Saturn. Um, Again, you've got a lock-on mechanic where you're shooting in one plane, but your 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 reticule is like picking up enemies in the background, and then you're firing lasers out at them. Different ships, with varying speeds and power, and you know um, fire patterns. Um, there's some zany story about like future industrialism and how companies have to have like have wars or or I don't know what the hell's going on. Um, but uh, this game is so good. It's so good. Uh, just the, the background graphics, look, the, the lighting effects on this game. Um, they actually released uh, two versions of this. The second one was called Sukugurantai Otoku, I think. And it has a same cover except a white border around it to notice, you know, notify us the difference. Uh, the second game plays with... Um, plays fine with the action replay this version if you're using an action replay um it makes the boss introduction screens all garbled and um and some other graphics are messed up 
So I actually have a Japanese Saturn, so I don't need Action Replay to play this game. But if you're playing this game on a U.S. Saturn, and you could play it with Action Replay, but just be advised that some of the things are going to be messed up, some of the visuals. Space Harrier. Um, it's Space Harrier. You know, what's more to say about it? It's, it's pretty much arcade perfect. Like this was, again, the, uh, the other game that was great to play with that mission stick. Um, but it plays just fine with an arcade stick, too. And it's even analog compatible, so if you have the 3D analog pad, you can uh, play that just fine. Space Invaders. Man, Japan really loved Space Invaders. Um, you know, considering when this came out, Space Invaders came out, what, 77 or something? And here it is being released for the Saturn in, like, 97 or 96. It's, uh... Eh, I paid two dollars for this. Steam Hearts. Okay, so this is what they call a hentai shooter, um, like a pervy shooter, because it's, it's. I guess some people call it pornographic, but really the Saturn version has been censored. Um, there's implications of porn even though what you're seeing is not technically porn by the way this this these scenes come up in between stages to advance the story you're some guy who's got to like save these women and by by you know um inserting your seed into them and that like makes them not go crazy or they are crazy but like you make them sane by by doing that this it's just bananas um and i'm gathering i'm not gathering that from the story because it's all in japanese so I, I just, that's what i read online so um another thick case game for some reason um the pc engine cd version is um a lot less censored so you see more and i think there's even like a comp japanese computer version i don't i forget which computer it is if it's the x6800 or the PC-88 or whatever, that's like the really, really raunchy version. Um, so, you know, it's a shooter game, right? So beyond all of this, it's like the actual shooter game has potential, but of course they don't show that on back here, but you know, um, you can actually play the game, not for all that weird stuff. All right. Strikers 1945. This perhaps is my favorite shooter series. So part one, part two, both made by Sikyo. So by now you know that Sikyo always has a variety of planes, a variety of attack patterns and um, power-up shots and lots of options to select in the menu screen. Um, I just, I, I like these games so much more than the standard 1942, 1943 it's confusing because you'd think it's it's part of the 1940X series from Capcom, but it's not. And, you know, hence the, term, the name Strikers 1945. Um, so when they released the second one, the sequel, so the sequel has uh, more over-the-top um, bomb attacks by your fighters. But it, you also, you know, how the mechanic where if you shoot, if you hold down your shoot button and shoot a, a charge shot, um that's limited in this you have to accumulate um i guess you know a power up bar um and every time you shoot down an enemy you, you move a notch in a power up bar and so that charge shot uh can only be done so far as how many enemies you've shot down so it's not unlimited like the first one here you can just spam that power up shot you know and kind of use that over and over again here um you have to be cognizant of, of timing of use. And also, um, uh, I think there's more... Um, well, no, that's, that's not true. I was going to say, this has more variety. Like, the enemies, the, your planes, are characteristics are more different than in the first one. But I, I think they're pretty different here, too. So maybe that's not true. Um, both super fun. And I love the fact that there's two of them. Um, the series did go on to have a third, but that's not on the Saturn. Super Dimension Fortress Macross. Um, so this is based on the Robotech or the Macross anime. I know it is Robotech here. Um, so there's two discs for this game because there's so much uh, animation 
that they recorded, they filmed and recorded for this game. So you can actually, and, and I think maybe they even took excerpts from the movie maybe, and they inserted it as cutscenes in between. So there's a lot going on here, but you know, they're speaking Japanese, of course, but you can still gather from context what's going on. The actual gameplay itself is not as refined. Um, when you, you, you can fly as and change between your different forms, but um, I don't find the, the gameplay, the, the controllability of the ships as, uh, it's just not as agile as I'd want it to be. It's a little clunky. Um, it's, it's almost like, you know, they, they just didn't get it right here with this game. Um, which is weird because I think this game came out after the excellent Super Famicom uh, Macross game. You know, if they had made this more like that, that would have been amazing. But they didn't. So I don't know if it was a different development team or what. Terra Cresta 3D. So Terra Cresta um, was released on the arcades. And there's, I think it's, it exists on the NES. It's a decent game. Um... So 3D here, as in they're bringing polygons now into the fold. Uh, it's okay. It's not really worth the money. It's more so like, you know, I'm trying to go for the set. So that's why I have it. Okay. And then to round this off, go a little out of order here. This is Twinkle, Twinkle's, uh, Twinkle Star Sprites. It's um, originated in Neo Geo. It's like a puzzle shooter. Right, and so the more things you shoot, the more combos, correct combos you shoot, the more junk comes down on your opponent's side. Um, this kind of game is obviously mo most fun played with um, someone else, playing against someone. Um, I haven't had that experience, or the ability to do that yet. Um, so, but highly regarded game. I, I can't say much more about it. I need to spend more time playing it. And now that brings us to the last of the bunch. The Thunder Force games. So we've got Thunder Force Gold Pack 1. And this contains Thunder Force 2 and Thunder Force 3. Now considering that Thunder Force 2 and 3 are both Mega Drive games or Genesis games. You know, you kind of you get the sense that you really couldn't have put 4 on here as well. You know, this is a CD game. You know, you what? But you know, they're... they're they know what they're doing, right? They know people are going to buy it. And so they're they're making you're putting this out, people buy it and then oh hey, look, next year we're going to release, you know, Thunder Force Gold Pack 2. Well, oh, what's on this one? It's uh Thunder Force AC and Thunder Force 4. So Thunder Force AC is the arcade version of Thunder Force 3. Thunder Force 3 was so popular that they released it for the arcade, but they did change out some of the levels. Right for whatever reason, so the game wasn't exactly the same or something. I don't know. Um, and so the music is streaming from the CD. It's Red Book Audio, I think. Um, whereas it's not chip tunes, but but it's the same melody and same sound, but it's just not chip tunes, right? So they, in my opinion, they could have totally had all four of these games on one, right? Come on, right? So, um, oddly, I don't think, I don't like the way the games play here as well as, you know, as much as the Genesis version. So, and there's something about it, I, don't, I can't put my finger on it, um, but, uh, they're not, they're fine, they play fine, you know, but just after years and years and years of playing the Genesis versions, this doesn't feel right to me. All right. Uh, my last Sega Saturn shoot 'em up, Thunder Force Five. Thunder Force Five is polygonal, and uh, this it, because it's polygonal, it doesn't look as nice as the previous games. Um, the graphics are fine, you know they're they're dipping their toes into 3D. Um, the gameplay is still great though, right? They they introduced a couple of new mechanics like an over weapon, right? Where um, if you hold down the over button, button whatever uh, you, your options will kind of go into overdrive based on whatever weapon you have armed. So that's really cool. Uh, and it introduces the almost game breaking free range attack. And so the free range attack, uh, it's hard to aim because it aims in the opposite of the direction that you move. 
but uh, when you get that free range honed in on a boss and you just let loose, it makes short work of them. It's it's a little overpowered, um, but I guess you know that's balanced by it, the fact that it's difficult to wield, right? So if you if you can master using the free range, you'll basically like blow through this. Um, they released another version of Thunder Force Five that came with the soundtrack, so it's a two disc. This is not that obviously. Um, so yeah, I, the Thunder Force series is one of my favorite series, and so um, it was a, a sixth game was released for the PS2, but uh, that's not the Saturn. So these are my Sega Saturn shooters. Um, I I know there's a couple other games like I don't consider run and gun games shooters, so that's why those aren't on here. And um, the Three Wonders is the compilation game I don't have. I'm debating as to whether or not I'm going to fork down the cash for that or not. So uh, let me know what you guys think of these games in the comments. And thanks for watching. I know this was a long one.